Having a place to organize my tools and to get my to-do list done around the house is a real lifesaver. I'm going to give you step-by-step -step clear instructions on how you can build a heavy-duty workbench using the Simpson Strong Tie Workbench Kit. This is DIY done right. As a general contractor, I've used Simpson Strong Tie products in just about every facet of construction. They're an industry leader as far back as I can remember. But it's really nice that they're using the same connectors that the pros use in a DIY kit that everybody can use to make all sorts of projects. Now I want to introduce to you what's in this package once you get it home. You're going to have your wood screws, your connector screws, eight RTC 2Z connectors, extremely useful. You have a project book, which gives you inspiration for many different things you want to do. And if you want to see more, you can go to the DIYDoneRight.com website and you have your plans. Everything is in here, including cut sheets. So let's go through the tools that we're gonna need for this project. Even though the workbench looks big and strong, there's not a lot of lumber needed due to the rigidity of these corner connectors. So one of the best things about this kit is it's been really simplified. Some real good thought has been put into it to make sure that it's really easy for you to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure out and cut the front and back rails, the side rails, and the corner posts and top rail. That's all the cuts that are needed for this. Once you get the cuts done, we'll go ahead and put it together. So we have our front and our rear posts laid out and we need to do the markings for the corner connectors. To make this easy, I've gone ahead and cut a six inch block because six inches is the first mark that we're gonna need for our corner connectors to get it off the floor. How this makes it easy is that I can place it at the end of each block and run it across, mark, 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 and that's done. Now the second measurement is the 28 and three eighths up from that. So I'm gonna make it easy for you. Add those two together, the six inches and the 28 and three eighths, and just mark it at 34 and three eighths on each board there and on the rear post. Your framing square that you have, it's really handy. It goes across the span of two two by fours. So once you make that mark on that one, you can flip it over and make the mark on the other one. So. For the front, we're gonna go ahead and slide up our first connector right to that line. And what I really like about this corner connector is this bottom piece. I know it's structural, but for me as a builder, it comes in really handy to use as a clamp hold. So let's go ahead and clamp that on there. Right like that. So then we're gonna go ahead and take our connector screws and our screw gun and Screw it down to the piece. It's just that simple. Oh, beautiful. So the next one we have to do is at the very top. And a good tip for that is to use the actual lumber that you're using as a guide. So once we slip on the bracket, the same orientation that we're doing on the lower version, let's go ahead and slip that on there. There we go. Put your lumber in. If you're looking at it, this is going to be the way that the lumber is going to go. Put it in there and match it up right to the top. So you see it's flush. That means your work surface that you're going to put down here, that half of sheet of plywood that you cut in half again, is going to be perfectly flat. All right, with the connectors firmly attached to our front post, we need to go ahead and make the back post. So we're going to do this in sections. We're going to do one side, and then we'll put the connectors on the other side, and then join the two together. So we're going to lay these out, and to make it really easy, we're going to go ahead and pull up the side rails that we cut earlier and slide them into the connectors on both sides. So our bottom connectors are screwed in and nice and tight. So in order to get the rear post connector attached, what we're going to do is we're going to fit it in the front post connector, clamp it, make sure it's nice and snug again, get our connector screws, which are self-piloting, and go in like butter. We're gonna go ahead and fit the other connector for the rear post, just slide it up. And that's it, as soon as it gets to there, go ahead and put the screws in on the other side, 
and one side's done. So we'll go ahead and repeat this for the other side, and then we'll put the side rails on. So I'm going to tilt this up. And it's really nice that the connectors keep it nice and balanced without me having to hold it up at the same time. So let's go ahead and put this on. You're right there. That is awesome. There we go. So we'll go ahead and put the screws on the back side and this back rail on. And then we'll go ahead and finish this project up on the workshop floor. Now, the plywood might seem daunting with a half sheet of plywood. It's kind of big. And if you only have a car, here's a tip. Most home stores will do courtesy cuts for free or at a minimal charge. So we need to notch out the plywood shelves that are going to go on the workbench. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and group these together and clamp them, just like so. And I'm going to make it even easier with a nice little tip, is you take a, a, a scrap piece of your 2 by 4 and we need to notch out the exact size of your 2 by 4 and then use your carpenter's pencil. If you have it, you can use a normal pencil and do the same trick, but lay it flat against there and it'll give you just a little extra play when you're putting it onto the workbench. So in case it's too tight, it keeps you from having to go back and recut. So you're going to want to do that to all four corners. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this out with my jigsaw. Now, one of the shelves, the top shelf, does not have the front corners notched. So now that I have the back corners notched on this, I'm going to unclamp it, slide the bottom one out that's not marked, and put that aside. And I'm going to go ahead and continue and cut out the other two remaining notches. So let's go ahead and put the shelves in that we cut earlier. And it's a good thing to remember that the lower shelf is the one where we cut all four notches out. So let's go ahead and drop that down. All right. And you're going to want to grab the wood screws that came along with the kit. You want to separate out the two inch long screws. Those are going to be for the top rail. We'll use those later. So grab the remaining screws and then go ahead and attach the shelves down to the frame of the workbench. All right, with the shelves in place, the next thing we need to do is attach the top rail. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put the pegboard on the back now. And remember, no cutting was involved. They've really put a lot of thought into this. So you can take everything and put it together as quickly as possible with as little effort as possible. All right, that's it. You've made a very useful and an extremely sturdy workbench. You gotta be proud of yourself. For more ideas like this, be sure to check out DIYDoneRight.com. For Simpson Strong Tie, I'm Jamie Schmidt. Thanks for watching.